Well, it's been a while since I've uh, done an update on uh, the mods I've done for my Escalade, and I've done quite a few in the last year, so I think it's time to catch up. So if you haven't checked out my few previous videos, I suggest you do that first because there's a lot of things that you might see here that I'm not necessarily going to cover in this video. So, and some I've actually upgraded and made some changes. So I'd suggest go watch those first and then come back here. So um, one of the things I'd done before was this uh, heads up display. This just plugs into the OBD port and uh, I added some 5% tint on the window to reflect it nicely. Um, before I just had a basic one, I've added one that now has an option to display some extra information, which is the, the yellow text there. So it displays coolant temperature for me. I know some models of Escalade do that already. The 07 doesn't on the DIC. So uh, it's nice to have it there because I do a lot of towing in the summertime. Uh, now, speaking of the DIC, um, one thing I had done this summer, this was just a little kind of fun project. Um, you know, the Bluetooth OBD adapters that you can buy. Um, I had a couple of those and uh, I started doing some reverse engineering on the uh, GM Land CAN bus and I was able to interface with the DIC. Um, so I wrote a little app for my phone. Uh, I'm an app developer by trade and uh, what it does is it forwarded all my notifications from my phone uh, to the DIC. So I just sent myself a text message just so you can see. But you know, any emails, text messages, Facebook, whatever, those messages can get forwarded here. Um, this is not an app I'm planning on releasing. It's just more of something for myself. It was kind of like a fun little project, but uh, it actually works quite well. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff you can do with the CAN bus via the the Bluetooth. I was able to like you know roll down the windows, lock and unlock the doors. Uh, you can even start the car, but um, yeah, fun little experiment there. So moving on over here, you can actually see one of the things I've done is I've done a wrap. Um, I was never a fan of the real glossy plastic look. Uh, in the Escalades. So I actually got this. I'm going to try to get the right angle. It's actually textured, if you can see that on the camera. So it looks really nice. Um, I had never wrapped a thing in my life before, um, but it was surprisingly easy. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description to where I got it from. I think it was called Vivid Brand. Um, I just ordered off Amazon. I think I paid like 80 bucks for six feet. I bought way more than I needed because I figured I was gonna screw it up royally, but uh, I am quite happy with the results. Uh, it looks very natural. Um, you know, there's a couple bubbles here and there that I'm gonna address in the summertime again. I'll probably peel them off and redo them, but overall, I, I'm very happy with the way it looked. Uh, so as you can probably see here, there's, a, there's quite a bit of new stuff going on here. Uh, first, let's talk about this Tesla style screen. Everybody's heard about them. Everybody's got, everybody's got an opinion on them as well, it seems. So I've now had it in here for 13 months. So I think I can give a pretty fair review. It's been through summer, it's been through winter. Um, as you can see today here, it is minus 27 degrees Celsius. This radio has had no issues with cold temperatures. Plus 35 in the summertime, it works just fine. Um, so I plan on doing a more in-depth video on this, so I'm just going to touch on it very lightly. Uh, a lot of people want to know, is it worth it? And just to simplify, I'm going to say, in my opinion, yes. You can get these for about $500. Uh, there's a lot of confusion around them. A lot of people seem to think that there are different vendors or different manufacturers. These Escalade radios are only made by one factory over in China and they're resold throughout the world under different brands or different companies like in the US there's Phoenix and Rhino radios and if you want to order from them if you're comfortable that you just want to order from a US company go ahead but if you want to save yourself a little bit of money go on AliExpress or go on Alibaba and you'll be able to get the same radio significantly cheaper 
So a couple things to keep in mind. There are some older Android 8 units out there. Do not get those ones. You don't want it. It, it does not have a feature called fast boot, which means when you turn off your car and turn on your car, you're going to have to wait a full 45 seconds for your radio to turn on. Uh, it, with Android 9, these radios have this fast boot feature and the radio literally turns on within two seconds. So you absolutely want that. And it also comes with a hard, hardware DSP audio processor, which significantly improves the sound quality. There are some new Android 10 units that just came out recently, um, like in the last four or five months. I haven't seen one yet, so I can't give a review on that. Um, if this one dies at any point, I'll probably move to that one. Uh, one thing that they I know they have improved is, I'm not sure if you can even tell, but the fitment isn't really that great. There's a little bit of gaps in here. Um, but the radio, unless you pointed that out to someone, no one's ever going to notice that. But, you know, when you install it, you're going to notice it's not a perfect fit. The Android 10 units, they've changed to a matte versus a shiny bezel, and it fits a lot better. Um, so like I said, maybe at one point I'll just decide to switch, but I'm quite happy with this radio as it is. So out of the box, it, it's a good radio. The first thing I would suggest is, and I'll put a link down in the description, there's a guy named Sergey who runs a Facebook group, and he does a custom firmware for these Tesla-style units. He charges $100.00 but he offers great support and a lot of improvements out of the box on the software. So I'd strongly suggest doing that first. Now, I spent a lot of time hacking this unit apart. I had it in my apartment on my workbench for about a month before I even put it in the car. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a software developer, so I went through, I was reverse engineering the APKs on this and, and rewriting some of the software to suit, suit it to the way I wanted it. Um, so this interface you're going to see these buttons in every, and the, these buttons on the bottom. Uh, people that have these radios will, will notice that it's different than theirs, and that's because I did a lot of stuff on my own. Um, one other thing that did bother me out of the box was it does support steering wheel controls out of the box. You don't need to do anything. It just works. The one problem with the steering wheel's controls was the volume. So with the Escalades, they have the Bose Luxury Amp, which is a CAN bus enabled amp, which means it's part of the, the network in the car. And these buttons transmit data to the that the amp recognizes and the amp increases the volume, not the radio. So what would happen is you'd adjust the volume up here on the steering wheel control. The radio volume would go up but so would your amp volume. So what would happen is, let's say then you started adjusting the volume from the radio, your amp volume wasn't changing. So let's say your, your radio volume's at 10 and your amp volume's at 30. And then you start turning this down. You're gonna turn down both. But then if you turn it up from just the radio, your amp volume's gonna be very low and your radio volume's gonna be very loud and you can get distortion and things like that. So, I actually found a fairly easy solution. It involves getting the uh, PAC SWRC. It's a steering wheel control interface that they sell for aftermarket radios. And what I had to do was under the uh, down under by under the brake pedal uh, in the steering wheel. Uh, column there's a there's a bunch of wires and I just had to cut a wire and wire it into this new harness and then wire that harness into the radio um, it took quite a bit of research to figure out which wires to do but now that it's done cutting that wire it no longer these controls are no longer able to send CAN bus data so they cannot increase the volume of the amp the amp stays at 25 volume all the time, and these buttons will only increase the radio volume. So that was my only real major issue with the radio. And after solving that, I love it. I could never go back to a normal radio. Now, just so people understand what these radios are, 
this is running full Android. You can pretty much run any Android application that you can download from the Google Play Store. You, you can install Netflix on these, you can install YouTube, uh, Spotify, whatever it is, and it works. It's great. You can stream Bluetooth from your phone to this. I actually disconnected Bluetooth for this video because it was using the radio microphone to record me for some reason. Um, but yeah, the unit is great on its own. I've install, installed Nova Launcher as my, my launcher on this. Uh, people familiar with Android phones are going to know what I'm talking about. Um, one thing it doesn't support, which wasn't a huge deal to me, it doesn't support the built-in XM radio in the Escalades. So you have two options. You can install the app, or what I did is I found this thing called the Sirius XM Commander. It's about $130, I believe. And there's a little module which is down behind the radio and this is the display portion here and it fits in perfectly where the clock was uh, now those remember the, my previous videos I used to have an Android phone in here but I actually like this a lot better so this is a great little radio I like that it shows the album art here it doesn't need Wi-Fi or anything this all comes through the, the satellite um, it's got a great feature that lets you go back uh, while it's playing, it's actually recording, and you can go back and listen to songs that you may have missed or you want to hear again. Um, and Sirius, you can get the subscriptions real cheap if you look out for the deals or if you call in. So I pay literally $5 Canadian a month, and I get all the stations. So it's great. And that just connects into the, the aux um, input on the radio, and it works great. Um one thing I would suggest when you first get one of these radios, get rid of the uh, default music app, bury it away, never touch it again, go pay for Power Amp, I believe it's about $5, it is the best music player on Android, and it looks fantastic on these radios. So, you can see here, I'm just going to turn the music down, I don't want to get hit by a copyright strike. So, it has a great interface. Um, I've turned on visualizations. You can download visualization packs. Uh, for those that w remember Winamp back in the day, um, it has like milk drop like plugins for visualizations, which look, which look amazing on here. Um, it supports the cover art nice and easy. Um, it is just a fantastic app. So, one question that I see posted a lot about these units asking is, you know, what, what's the sound quality like? And I will say unequivocally, it is way better than stock. Um, you know, the stock uh, settings give you like treble, mid, and bass. Um, you know, on here you have the built-in equalizer and power amp, but you also have, as I mentioned before, you know, a hardware DSP processor uh, built into this radio. And it gives you a lot of options here uh, of how you want to customize your sound. So one thing immediately you will notice is the bass is a lot stronger out of here. Um, you know, these units have the built-in subwoofer under the armrest here, and this unit will take full advantage of it. Um, you will notice an immediate improvement in sound quality uh, switching to this unit. Uh, that was a great thing about it and one of my concerns as well once I got it hooked up. One tip for people that when you first install this, you may be getting crappy sound. Disconnect your battery, wait 10 seconds, reconnect your battery, it resets the amp, and uh, the sound will be perfect. Um, one other thing, you've probably seen me playing with this uh, here. So this did not come with the radio. This I, uh, I built on my own. Um, it's quite involved, let's say. Um, I had to use a Arduino microprocessor board uh, people that are into electronics will know what that is and write some custom code and this is a rotary encoder uh, a volume knob essentially uh, that I can use and what it did was it connects into the USB of this this has two USB ports and what what my code does is basically you can see here this little finger here it's simulating mouse clicks here 
So when I turn the volume up and down, it's simulating the click there. Um, and then I also, I can press the button and it turns it down for me. Uh, that simulates a key press. And I also use Tasker. Those familiar with Tasker on Android, uh, Tasker does a lot of great automation things. Um, so it can be used to intercept key presses and do certain things. So along that lines, uh, speaking of USB, so this is a little USB presenter, right? It's got a little laser light here and some different buttons and, and whatnot. And using Tasker, uh, what these do is send key presses just like a keyboard would. So using Tasker, I can intercept those presses and launch different apps. So this thing runs off a rechargeable battery. I've literally charged it once in the last year. But, you know, what I can do is, so the top button here goes to my music. The right one, if I press it, launches my, my satellite radio. Um, and so you can see that here. Now it's on, now it's playing the satellite radio, or I can go back to my music by pressing the top button. So, yeah, it's, it's a great little thing for quick shortcuts. Um, and these you can get for under $20. There's like $10 things, but this particular one has worked great. Only needed to charge it once. Um, very happy with it. So I don't want to dwell too much on the, uh, the head unit because I'm going to do a separate video on that. Let's talk about what else I've done. Um, I've replaced my headliner. Sway. It's really nice. Um, just like real suede um i'm going to uh cut back to at the end of the video i'm going to show you something when it's nighttime. it'll look a lot better uh so just stay tuned to the end of the video and uh one last thing i did here i did this before i installed the android radio because you can do this with the android radio uh but some of you might recognize this as a google home mini um so, because I have Wi-Fi in the truck, um, I installed this, and it's a great little handy thing to have. Hey Google, what's the weather today? Today in Winnipeg, it'll be partly cloudy, with a forecasted high of minus 24 and a low of minus 31. Currently, it's minus 26 degrees and partly cloudy. There is currently an extreme cold warning in effect. Yeah, so there it is. The kids love it. Uh, you know, when you hands free, you need a question answered. There you go. Um, so just stay tuned and I'm going to show you a couple more things when it turns to nighttime. So now that it's dark out, I'm going to show you a couple quick things. Uh, first off, got the ghost lights on the door. Doesn't look that good on snow, but on the asphalt, it looks really good. These are the type that you drill into the door. It comes with a little drill bit and you just drill in under here and uh, wire it. You can wire it right to this, uh, the, um, the wiring right from this light here. So you don't actually have to take off the whole door. You just need to pop off this piece. Uh, for each door, it took less than 10 minutes. It's really easy to do. They also sell the stick-on ones that use a little magnet. I'm gonna remind people, you're driving an Escalade, don't stick on something that looked like it came from the dollar store on your doors. Get the ones that drill in. I have the other ones, I looked at them, I won't even install it, they look like garbage. And uh, next up, so we talked about the headliner, nice suede headliner. I also added the Rolls-Royce style fiber optics. The video and pictures do not do this justice. It looks amazing. Um, now, originally I had done this with the stock headliner, the beige one with the little diamond pattern. It didn't look good. Like at nighttime it looked fine, but during the daytime you could see each of these little fiber optic pieces protruding, it didn't look good. So I took the whole thing out, had to rip up, rip out all the uh, individual uh, fiber optic pieces, redo the suede, and then put everything back together again. It was a lot of work, but 
it looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. I would strongly recommend anyone that likes to do it yourself. Uh, you can do this whole thing for just a few hundred dollars. If you're going to take it to a shop, you're paying thousands. So um, I highly recommend it. And uh, this is controlled via Bluetooth. You can change the colors or you can set it on to an automatic uh, pattern. It also has a remote, which I don't know what I did with it. But um, yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, it's something I'm very happy with and I think I will probably do in any future vehicle. Um, so I think that wraps up the uh, mods I've done for uh, 2021. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just leave it down below and I will uh, do my best to answer them. Uh, I'll also leave some links down there to um, information on, you know, where I got some of this stuff um, or uh, other instructions there. So have a look there if you're uh, looking for some things. And uh, that is it. Thanks for watching.